Welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast, where we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage everyone to learn more, and we work to equip believers to share their faith with everyone they know. All right, welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast. My name is Joshua Sherman, and I am your host here. Last time we were talking about the gospel and the cross and comparing the cross and Jesus' Passover to the Passover that happened in the Exodus, which is where God essentially defined the nation of Israel through their loyalty to him uh, and delivered them out from slavery to Egypt, from slavery under the gods of Egypt and under Pharaoh. Uh, so today, I want to look at another thing that God has delivered us from, and this is even more universal. Uh, so the original Exodus, of course, was about delivering a particular people in Israel uh, from Egypt. Um, and it wasn't just the people of Israel defined ethnically, although that was kind of a, the start of it, right? We actually see a number of people uh, that were not ethnically um, sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, down through the generations, that actually traveled with the people of Israel out of Egypt uh, and sojourned with them. Uh, so one of the, the people that we see that uh, being true of is Caleb. Uh, you think Joshua and Caleb, the two spies that went into the land and said, we can take them, right? Um, Caleb was not originally uh, Hebrew. Um, so he actually joined uh, with the people of God as they were exiting Egypt uh, and was loyal to Yahweh. And so he was brought along on the journey and considered part of the people of God through faith. That should sound familiar to any of us that have paid attention to how Paul writes about faith and our membership uh, as children of Abraham and therefore children of God by faith. Uh, so very important. So again, now we're looking at the cross. This is more universal. Uh, this isn't just about freeing Israel from slavery to Egypt. It's actually about freeing all of humanity from the fear of death and the power of death as Jesus conquers death. From Hebrews 2, we read, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way. So we see here the writer of Hebrews talking very confidently about the fact that Christ conquered death, that Christ took the power of death from the devil in his death and resurrection. Right? This is something we don't often talk about as much in the Western church, but it's actually pretty central to the way uh, that uh, the Eastern Orthodox see uh, Pascha, see Passover, see uh, the resurrection, see what we would uh, generally call Easter. Uh, they see this largely as Jesus conquering death, right? So again, you know, I don't think we need to pose a lot of either ors here, right? We're used to talking about Jesus and the cross and sin, uh, and that's certainly part of it. And we see Paul talk about, um, you know, the sin, our sin uh, certificate of sin being uh, nailed to the cross, right? That is also about freedom. Uh, because sin essentially was equated with debt, and debt in the ancient world meant slavery. If you had debt and you couldn't pay it off, you worked it off as a slave, right? So what we see is that people had been enslaved through sin. They'd been enslaved to uh, spiritual powers. They had been enslaved uh, in a lot of ways through their fear of death. Uh, and Jesus really brings about the reversal <laughs> the conquering of all of these things in his death and resurrection. Um, so here we have describing him um, breaking the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. We actually see the aftermath of this in Revelation 1, where uh, Jesus actually speaks to John. Uh, he places his right hand on John and says, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death 
and Hades. You see, in the ancient world, it was believed that various uh, spiritual powers held the keys to death and Hades. Uh, depending on uh, kind of where you were at, that might be Baal, it might be Zeus, it might be Hecate or Artemis, it might be Persephone or Hades, right? There were a number of different uh, spiritual beings that were believed to hold those keys. Uh, in Hebrews 2, of course, we see that it's specifically the devil that's identified by this biblical author under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as the one that held the power of death. So then when we look back and we see Jesus saying in Revelation, I was dead, now look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades, what he's doing is he's declaring the power, the victory that he had in conquering the power of death and taking the keys of death and Hades from the devil. Right? This is part of the good news of the gospel. It's not just about forgiveness of sins. It's not just about uh, our freedom from the spiritual powers. It's also about our freedom from the fear of death. These are all wrapped up in the cross. They are all wrapped up in Jesus' resurrection. They are all aspects of his victory. So I think uh, when we see that and we recognize this and we can you know, kind of say like, wow, like this is the God that we serve. He conquered all of these things. He reversed all of these things. He is the one who holds the keys of death and Hades. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. It's not Baal. It's not Zeus or Hades or Persephone or Hecate or anyone else that's going to judge the dead, Christ will do that because he has conquered the power of the devil, the power of him who hold, held the power of death. Whew. That's amazing, isn't it? Um, I think it's, it really helps to kind of set the tone for uh, what we expect uh, as believers uh, when we look forward to the life to come when we step out in faith and boldness in this life, recognizing that Christ has conquered death. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, please like, subscribe, write reviews. Uh, go ahead and share this with your friends. Want to get the word out to help equip Christians to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone they know. God bless. You've been listening to the Tending Our Nets podcast. If you like what you hear, check us out at the Raven Creek Social Club and by searching for us on social media via Tending Our Nets. Raise us up to bed.